Now, when you think about the most luxurious party ever held, what locations come to mind? Hollywood, Monte Carlo, Rio de Janeiro, maybe a private island in the Pacific. You probably don't immediately think of ancient ruins in the desert of Iran, though. But that's exactly where the most luxurious and exclusive party on Earth was held in the 1970s. It was so luxurious, so outrageous, and so over the top, that it has become almost mythical. It was organized in 1971 by Muhammad Reza Pahlavi, the last king of Persia, or as he is more commonly known, the Shah of Iran. Persia was known at the time as the Iranian Empire, and he ruled from 1941 until he was overthrown during the Iranian Revolution of 1979. As the last ruler of Iran, he is usually simply known as the Shah. And he also ex assumed many extravagant royal titles when he took the throne, that almost sound divine, such as King of Kings and Light of the Aryans. During his reign, though, he was dedicated to one goal, restoring the glory of the Persian Empire. He also wanted to spearhead the rapid industrialization and modernization of his country. He granted women the right to vote in elections, a right, of course, that they would they would then lose after the revolution in 1979, and he spent billions of pounds improving the country's education system and healthcare systems. With his overthrow in 1979, the Iranian monarchy was abolished, and the country was transformed into an Islamic Republic. The Shah would eventually die in exile in Egypt in 1980. In 1971, the year we're interested in, the Shah had been as unpopular among the Western youth of the time as the war in Vietnam, with student movements in the West protesting his rule. A visit he made to Germany just a few years earlier had sparked riots in Berlin. But that year, 1971, was the anniversary of the founding of the Persian Empire two and a half thousand years earlier, and the Shah was determined to mark this anniversary in style. He announced that from the 12th of October 1971 to the 14th of October, he would hold one of the biggest and most luxurious parties on planet Earth. Now he wanted to hold this party in an attempt to show the world the face of an advanced, free and modern Iran. The celebration was aimed at highlighting Iran's pre-Islamic roots and to promote its founder, Cyrus the Great, as a universal hero. The party was to be held at the ruins of Persepolis, the first capital of the Persian Empire. All in all, the preparations would take a whole year. The guest list was to comprise of royalty and heads of states from countries all over the world. The Shah hired French architects, interior decorators and couturiers to design 50 tent-like suites for the guests, right next to the ruins and very close to the tomb of King Cyrus the Great himself. Each of the tent suites had two bedrooms, two bathrooms, an office, and a lavishly furnished salon, able to accommodate up to 12 people. A tapestry with a picture of the head of state who was staying in the tent hung on the wall of each tent. He called his tent city Golden City. Next to the tent city, the Shah had an, air, an airfield built and also constructed a 1,000 kilometer motorway from Tehran to Persepolis, Various trees were planted in the desert in an attempt to recreate how Persepolis would have looked in its heyday. It's said that over 15,000 trees were transported and planted in the desert. Now, as preparations for the party was gathering steam, newspaper headlines around the world were starting to get wind of it, and it was being described as the billion dollar camping trip or the party of the century, and even the mother of all parties. For the party, the Shah flew in 50,000 songbirds from Europe. The catering service was provided by Maxime's restaurant in Paris, regarded at that time as the world's most famous restaurant. Maxime's even had to close up shop for two weeks so that all of its staff could dedicate themselves to serving at the Shah's party. All the food, except for the Russian caviar, was flown in from France. The dinnerware, was all made from extremely expensive Limoges porcelain. 250 red Mercedes-Benz 600 limousines were used to chauffeur guests from the airport and back. The Iranian military 
He even had to fly in 150 tons of kitchen equipment from Paris over 5,000 kilometers away. So it was a big undertaking. The festivities were broadcast to the entire world by means of a satellite television. It officially started with a speech by the Shah at the mausoleum of Cyrus the Great on the 12th of October, in which he paid homage to the first king of Persia. Because the Shah was such a controversial figure, people around the world were paying very close attention to who was paying their respects to the Shah and how. Now, according to protocol, the most prominent guest was the Ethiopian emperor, Haile Selassie, who accompanied his daughter and his dog. And of course, he never left the Shah's side, being the guest of honor. The US was represented by Vice President Spiro Agnew, Queen Elizabeth, having been advised not to attend for security reasons, sent her husband, Prince Philip, and her daughter, Princess Anne. Other notable guests included the King and Queen of Denmark, the King and Queen of Belgium, the King and Queen of Nepal, as well as the King of Norway. Cardinal Maximilian de Fastenberg represented the Pope and the Vatican. The dinner table in the main tent reserved for the guests of honor was almost 70 meters long, and it took 125 women six months to embroider the tablecloth alone. Everything was equipped to perfection. Everything that is except the coffee machine, which could only make two cups of coffee at a time. Now, thankfully, the co-organizer, Felix Riel, had organized for 20 kilos of Nescafe to be brought along with him from his native Liechtenstein, and they ended up making big kettles of it. Can you imagine? Millions of pounds on the finest food from Maxime's, only to be served instant coffee. I would be devastated. It's estimated that the celebrations at Persopolis cost around 300 million pounds, making it undoubtedly one of the most expensive parties ever to be held. For the Shah, however, this celebration was more than just a means to show off his wealth. It was an affirmation of, of his and Iran's international status as one of the world's leading nations. The pre-Islamic theme was itself a means of asserting his dominance over challenges posed to his authority by Iran's Muslim hierarchy. Unfortunately, however, the strategy would come to haunt him less than a decade later, as the Islamic revolutionaries who eventually managed to overthrow him rhetorically employed his famous party against him as an example of his excessiveness. And of course, he then was exiled to Egypt where he died. So there you have it, the most expensive, most exclusive, party in the world in 1971, attended by royalty and heads of state who stayed in tents in the desert in Iran. Spectacularly interesting, don't you think? Okay, that's all for this video. I will see you in the next one. If you liked it, please do like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.